Hello everyone, and welcome back to America's favorite cooking show, Chomping with Chance. I'm your host, Chance Chung, and today's episode is a very special episode because today we'll be covering how I came to know the art of cooking, and that is my senior project. For senior project, the students at Columbus High School, the class of 2021, were encouraged to learn a new skill over the course of the year in which they had no background in whatsoever. As I thought to myself, what should I do for my senior project? I began to think about what would be most useful for me in my future life in college and after that. And that is how I came to decide on cooking. For the topic of cooking, senior project required the student to create a cookbook of at least 15 recipes explaining the ingredients, the steps, and images of the meals they made. Once the students had chosen their topic, their next step was picking a mentor, the person who would help them grow in their senior project. As I thought to myself, who could I pick to be my mentor? It came to my mind that there would be no better person for the job than my father, Ken Chung. Once I had chosen my topic, found my mentor, I then had to figure out what recipes I'll be putting in my cookbook. As my father and I discussed what recipes we would put in my cookbook, we thought that it'd be very interesting to include a number of family recipes that he had learned and add a little bit of twist to them to make them my own. In my cookbook, cooking with chance. There are a number of recipes in which can be found that can be labeled as beginner, intermediate, and difficult levels for cooking and conquering the kitchen. As I included many American style meals, such as quesadillas and pizza, I thought that it'd be very unique to include some of my own Asian culture in it, as I chose to make sushi. Those three meals are just a few examples of what can be found in my cookbook, as we have 15 pages of appetizers, breads, entrees, vegetables and sides, and even dessert. While I enjoyed every aspect of this project, there are a few things that I had to know before I even thought about conquering the kitchen. The first thing I had to acknowledge before going into the kitchen and beginning to cook was the idea of cooking safety. Rule number one, stay in the kitchen at all times when using appliances that require electricity or using the stove top. Rule number two, when using the oven or stove, check the food regularly to make sure that it's not burning and use a timer to ensure that you know when the food is ready and is not overdone. Rule number three, keep anything that can catch fire away from the stove at all times when it is on. Heat the pan slowly to the temperature you need and add food gently to the pot to ensure that nothing will splatter. If a fire starts in the kitchen, here's what you are supposed to do. Number one, if the fire starts in a small pan, do not try to move it. Use an oven mitt to place a lid over the pan and turn off the heat and let it cool until the fire goes out. Never throw water on a grease fire. If a fire starts in the microwave or oven, turn off the heat and do not open the door. Call the fire department or 911 if this is the case and do not try and handle large fires on your own. Those are just a few of the many rules that need to be kept in mind when using the appliances in the kitchen. Before starting to cook, you need to make sure that you have your ingredients ready. Follow the recipe step by step using correct measurements of the ingredients to ensure that the meal will be made correctly. When using the stove, it must always be turned off once you are done using it. When following along a recipe, the ingredients can be measured with a large measuring cup that has the measurements listed along the side, or you can use individual measuring cups, such as one half a cup, one cup, or tiny measuring cups that measure teaspoons and tablespoons. There are also many pots and pans of many sizes that should be used depending on how big the meal is you're preparing. Make sure that once you are done using your ingredients, your measuring cups, your pots and pans, that they are all put away. This should be done to ensure that your ingredients can be used again and to make sure that none of the items you use are misplaced. Once you have gone over the specific safety concerns, gotten your ingredients ready, your measuring cups ready, along with your pots and pans out, and made sure that you have a clean, ready cooking space, you can begin to cook. As I started my cooking project, I began with easy to make recipes because I had no experience in the kitchen whatsoever. I had no idea how to use the oven. I had no idea that there were so many specific measurements. I had no idea how to boil water. I had no idea how to use the toaster. I had a lot of obstacles to overcome. Keeping that in mind, the first thing I cooked was a very simple appetizer known as oyster crackers. 
These oyster crackers called for five ingredients and only took four steps to make whilst letting them sit for two hours before they were done. As you can see, this was a very simple and easy recipe to make. But since I had no experience in cooking, this was a great way to prepare me for what was to come with the meals in the future. After making the oyster crackers, I chose to make a more difficult appetizer to follow that. I chose buffalo chicken dip, which required a lot more patience and time to make because the steps were more in depth for the meal. This is what the buffalo chicken dip ended up looking like. This got me more familiar with the items in the kitchen and using them for a longer period of time, which would help me when I made my entrees. From this, I went on to make a bread. I made cornbread, which allowed me to use the oven instead of the stove, which was also a major learning step. After I made the appetizers and the bread, I went into my entrees. There are a total of six entrees in my recipe book, thus being a quesadilla, a quarantine pizza, which was very helpful because during the quarantine we could not leave the house often to go and get stuff, tomato basil soup, a sunny side up egg, sushi, and a grilled cheese. This is an image of me placing my quarantine pizza into the oven to bake. Pictured before you now is an image of all of the entrees that can be found in my recipe book. Preparing these entrees helped me gain a lot more knowledge about cooking. I was forced to stay in the kitchen for a longer period of time and to keep a strong watch over the meals as they were preparing. With many steps to follow, I had to make sure I knew exactly what I was doing. Following the entree portion of the cookbook, I prepared four vegetables slash sides that could be eaten alongside the entrees. These included roasted Brussels sprouts, baked vegetables, rice casserole, and mac and cheese. Now I will say, the mac and cheese was the most difficult recipe I had to make. The mac and cheese required seven ingredients in which were very specific in the measurements. Not only this, but the steps that went along with the mac and cheese were very in-depth and very difficult to follow. In the recipe book, the appetizers and bread can be labeled as beginner, the entrees and sides can be labeled as intermediate, and the dessert is the most difficult portion of the recipe book. As you can tell, I went from making very simple appetizers to more difficult entrees along with sides and vegetables. Finally, we move on to the last portion of my cookbook, the dessert portion. In my opinion, the dessert portion was the most difficult one. The dessert portion required a lot more steps than any of the others did. For example, I had to split the steps up for the plum cake, as in which I made the cake and then I also had to make the icing in separate times. For the saltine crackers, I had to make the crackers along with make the chocolate and then move the crackers to a spreadsheet and pour the chocolate onto the crackers all while the chocolate was still hot and able to melt onto the crackers. I was used to seeing time as a factor, not as something that would determine if the meal was good or not, and this was very frightening to me. This is what the plum cake and saltine cracker toffee ended up looking like. In my cookbook, I put together 15 different recipes which can all be seen as different levels of difficulty. As I moved to one area to the next, I had to be more mindful and aware of what was taking place in the kitchen. When we told our teacher what we were doing, she sent us a contract in which we had to follow throughout the entirety of our senior process. The first portion of the contract states that we are to demonstrate the knowledge of proper hygiene and food safety, basic first aid, proper fire safety procedures along with basic accounting skills, proper knife safety and techniques, if required, and to host one reception, but this was not possible due to COVID. Following the second portion of the contract, we were required to host a formal dinner party along with participate in a group preparation for a large party, but neither of these were possible due to COVID. However, we were required to create a professional looking cookbook that consisted of 15 recipes along with the ingredients and the steps to go along with that recipe. Furthering this, we had to show a picture or video evidence of the meal once it was prepared. All things considered, I really enjoyed this project. At the beginning of the year, I was completely new to cooking, and at this place right now, I can say that I have a lot of experience and have gained much knowledge on the topic. I went from only being able to make meals in the microwave, such as Hot Pockets, to being able to prepare meals such as quesadillas in the stove and oven. While many people may consider my recipes as very easy, I am very proud to say that I have completed all of them on my own. After completing this project, there are many ways in which it will be helpful to me in the future. For example, I will be able to save money and make my own food rather than going out every night to get something to eat. Throughout this project, I have found that I have not only grown through cooking, but I have also grown as a person. As I was learning to cook and facing all the obstacles that came with it, I realized that there's so much that I'm able to do when I put my mind to something. That was a story of how I came to know and love the art of cooking. 
Thank you so much for tuning in on this week's episode of Chomping with Chance, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.